Hi everybody, Steven here. In this video, I'm going to upgrade my vSphere environment. I'm running vSphere 8 update 3 and I'm going to update it to the latest version of version 9. This is going to be part 1 of a two-part series. In this one, I'm going to do my vCenter server first. So you want to stick around for that because there's a couple things you need to be aware of. See you in a bit. Thanks for sticking around everybody. So uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade my environment. I'm currently running vSphere 8 update 3 uh, with my hosts. I've got a three node cluster uh, and it's running vSAN. It's all running update 3. So we're going to take a look at how I do this. This is going to be a two part series as I mentioned before. This one I'm going to focus on vCenter server. And, and like I said, you want to stick around to the end because there's definitely something that you need to be aware of. Okay. Um, now, before we begin, I always like to throw this out there. For those of you that support the channel by subscribing, hey, 10 thumbs up for you folks. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Anyways, um, and if you're new to the channel and uh, this is kind of stuff that you're looking for, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing. It's totally free. Just click that subscribe button, okay? I and mean, you got to remember, without subscribers, there's no content developers, developers, so there wouldn't be stuff like this on the internet. Also, other ways to support the channel is to share the video, liking also, leaving comments down below. And again, I got super thanks enabled, but that's totally up to you. Uh, so why don't we get started? Okay, uh, let's get started. Now, before we jump into my lab environment, let's take a look at some of the tech docs here. I'm going to go to techdocs.broadcom.com. Uh, I'm going to go to virtual cloud infrastructure. I'm going to go to vSphere. Sorry, let's try that again. I'm going to go to vSphere. Uh, from there, I'm going to click on vSphere. You'll see them on the version 9 product page. And then you have the upgrade here. Uh, I suggest, again, before you do any upgrades, again, you always check with your vendors, servers, make sure they're supported, all your hardware, your SAN, all that. There's a whole bunch of stuff you need to do, again, um, uh, in advance. Okay? Um, so, uh, again, go through this document. Uh, here they talk about the upgrade options. Okay? And then how to upgrade. Come on. How to upgrade. And it kind of gives you a quick <clears throat> um, highlighted overview. You get started with vSphere upgrade. First of all, back up everything. You want to have backups. Then you upgrade vCenter server. Then you upgrade your ESXi host. Then you upgrade your VMs. And then that's it. Okay, you're pretty much done. Uh, there's a couple things you need to be watch out, you need to watch out for, and I'll show you that as we go through. This is a two-part series, like I said. So let's get started with the vCenter server portion. And yeah, I backed up everything. Okay, so let's go over to here. Now, <clears throat> let's look at my environment. I have a very simple environment. It's got a single cluster, cluster 01. My vCenter server, site A, vCenter, uh, sa-01.vclass.local. I got three hosts. I'm using vSAN. I got uh, a wind VM over here. If I actually look at my cluster, if I go to updates here, okay, I'm using images for my uh, baselines, or sorry, my lifecycle management. And uh, you'll see I'm compliant. I'm with 80 update 3b that's all my hosts are in that cluster at that level when i look at my vm if i click on updates you'll see vmware tools is up to date and my hardware is up to date so everything's up to date beautiful right there's no problems in my environment again if you've got problems you always want to make sure you fix all that stuff beforehand uh, if i go into licensing here i want to point this out administration um where are you licenses and i'll uh, probably have to highlight or get rid of that screen there you'll actually see uh, again my hosts are licensed they're good till uh, 2026 my vCenter system is licensed good to v, uh, 2026 and these are vmug licenses and my vSAN is good till 2026 so I'm licensed I'm good I'm using my vmug licenses all right so let's go ahead and do the upgrade all right so I'm going to do vCenter first which is what I'm supposed to do right now first of all before we get into that let me just show you one thing one more thing if I go to inventory You'll see there's my cluster. There's my ESXi host. I only got one VM. Where's my vCenter server? I don't see it as a VM here. So my vCenter server is not in this environment. It's in an outside environment, which, again, that might be your environment. Uh, if you're a small shop, you probably have your vCenter managing itself on a set of hosts, which would be fine. It would be displayed here. I don't. My vCenter server is in a different vCenter environment. Remember, I'm, I'm a nested environment. So let me go to my vCenter server where that is. And let me just show you where that VM is running. 
And uh, right now you'll see over here, there's my host one, two, and three. Those are just VMs. Okay, remember I'm nested. But you'll see my vCenter server. Uh, where are you? It is, come on, right here. Site A vCenter vcsa-01 so that's a vm right there okay uh so i'm gonna be upgrading so let me first of all you got to download the iso for your vcenter server and i've already done that so let me get my uh where are you again vcenter servers there's my version 9 right there the iso uh, i'm going to right click and i'm going to mount that there we go so i've mounted it uh, in there, there's a couple folders, very similar to installing your vCenter server, if you've watched my videos on that. It's pretty much almost exactly the same. So I'm going to go with the, the user interface installer. I'm going to pick Windows. So that's what I'm running right now. And then there's the installer. I'll double click on that. And then from there, we may as well go full screen. You get a choice. Install if I'm doing a brand new installer, upgrade. I'm not doing a restore. So, hey, let's click on upgrade. So I'll click on that. And you'll see, it says, upgrade and appliance is a two-stage process. First stage in involves deploying a new vCenter server to the targeted host or compute resource in a vCenter server. Um, the second stage completes the upgrade by copying data from the source appliance. So it's gonna spin up a new appliance and then it's gonna copy the data from the old appliance to the new appliance. That's what's going on. So let's try it out. Let's go next. Again, you go through the license agreement, check that all off, whatever, and then go next. Now it's saying, what's the source uh, vCenter server that I'm uh, going to upgrade. So this is site a dash vCenter sa dash one dot vclass dot local. So my fully qualified domain name and it's port 443. I'm going to connect to it and we go da 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 da. We just wait a few seconds and then here we go. So now it's going to ask me, okay, what's the single site on username to manage that? So I'm going to type in my password and you see it already filled out administrator at vCenter dot local for me, right? I guess it just assume that. Then it says ESXi host or vCenter server that manages the source appliance. <clears throat> so where is my vCenter server running right now? And right now it's running in a different vSphere environment, okay? So my is, um, I'm gonna put its IP 192.168.70.20. That's in my environment. Uh, what's the user uh, name and password for that? Okay. And I'm going to go next. Now, obviously, again, if, uh, if the, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. I'll go next. It, it comes up with the thumbprint. I'll accept. And we give it a few seconds. Now it's going to say, again, where am I, where am I deploying this? So I'm going to be deploying this to my, uh, um, my other vCenter server. So that's at 192.168.70.20. And again, username, administrator, vSphere local I'm not sure why it asks you this stuff twice but it does so I'm filling it in I go next and again the thumbprint I'm gonna accept it so it's looking at that vCenter server and says okay uh, where do you want to install it is there a folder you want to install it in? I'm just gonna put it in the root of my data center then to say what host in that vCenter environment do you want to install it on notice I only got one host that's a bare metal machine that's my Dell R740 right so remember, I'm in a nested environment. That means my ESXi hosts are VMs, right? So I'm going to say, all right, uh, my vCenter server is going to be installed there. I'm going to click Next. Now it's asking me for the name of the VM. Now I'm going to type in the name of the VM. I'm going to get an error here. Hold on. That's the name of the VM. What's going to be the root password? And I'm going to confirm the root password. I'm going to get an error here. Watch this. I'm going to click Next. And it comes and says, hey, that name's already been taken because my vCenter server is sitting there right? The, the old one or the current one, right? So I'm going to say, okay, dash V9. Let me close that. And then next. So it's going to say it should be okay there. Now it's asking me to size. I'm going to pick small for my environment. That's okay. Pick the appropriate size for yours. Now it looks at that host and says, what data store do I want to install it on? So uh, this one looks good enough for me, solid state. I'm going to put it in thin disk mode. So I'm not going to pre-allocate my disk, right? And then I'm just going to go next. Now it's asking me what port group on that host do you want to install it on? So where is where is your existing vCenter server appliance plugged into? What port group? It's probably plugged into like a management port group. Mine in my environment is called internal. Okay, that's what I've got it set up as. Yours will probably be some kind of say management of some sort. Now. Uh, Remember, I'm spinning up a, a new VM here. It's asking me, how do I want to assign IP addresses, right? 
So I can do DHP or static. I'm going to go static. And notice it says temporary address. So I'm going to give this thing an address, 10. That's on the subnet that my existing vCenter is. And then I'm going to give it a, maybe a 252 is the address. And then prefix length, uh, subnet mask. Uh, oh, and then my gateway, 172.20.10. All right. And then my DNS server, 172.20.10.10. So now this temporary address, so remember, it's spinning up a new VM, okay? And it's going to give it this temporary address. Then it's going to, once that's up, stage two, it's going to start copying stuff from the original. Once it's done that, it's going to switch over to this. It'll shut this guy, switch over to this guy, and give this guy the new one, the original IP address that I had before, and the same host name and all that. Great. That's the idea. Let's go next. It gives me a summary. And I hit finished. And it's in stage one deploying. It's creating the VM, and it's going to deploy that for me, right? So, uh, well, yeah, I'll just, actually, let's see what here. I'll put that to the side. Let's go over here to my vCenter. Not, not that one, this one here. And you should see it. There it is right there. It's deploying a VM. So there it's deploying that new one. So we got to wait till that's finished. So you know what? Um, I'm going to speed this up. Hey, by the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider supporting the channel and subscribing. Over 75% of you watch videos, these videos, but you're not subscribed. So please click that subscribe button. It's totally free. See you back in a bit. Okay, so uh, we are back. We can see that stage one's finished. Let's click on continue, all right? Then we're in stage two. This is where it's gonna copy stuff over. So I'm gonna go next. Let's go full screen on this thing, why not? And again, it does this little spinny thing there. So we give that a few seconds, or maybe a little bit more than a few seconds. And that install part didn't take too long, to be honest with you. That's gonna vary depending on your environment. It took me maybe, um, five, 10 minutes, maybe 10 minutes or something like that. I wasn't sitting here when it was running. So again, it's doing its pre-checks. Okay, so it finished its pre-checks to come up and it's given us a couple of warnings. It says integrated Windows authentication is deprecated. So it's telling us, okay, it's, it's deprecating that type of authentication. Uh, it's talking about certain extensions registered cannot be upgraded. Uh, it's talking about lifecycle manager on uh, host. So it's update manager. It's basically saying if you got update manager, that's being deprecated. Uh, and basically same kind of thing over here and baselines and hosts version seven and lower versions. Uh, so again, so this doesn't support hosts that are version seven and lower. So eight and, and higher type of thing. So that's kind of what it's telling me here. Anyways, that's what I'm reading. So they're just warnings. We're just gonna keep piling, uh, uh, plowing through. So let's click on close. Now it's asking me, what kind of uh, data do I want to bring across? Do I just want to do configuration and inventory? Do I want to do configuration, inventory, task, and events? Configuration, inventory, task, events, and performance metrics. Again, you'll probably pick all of them, right? Uh, you'll probably want to retain all that stuff. Uh, personally, I don't care in my environment. I'm just going to pick the minimum here. It's almost about the same anyways, but it's giving me a rough idea of about 40 minutes that this is going to take. So I'm going to click next. Again, do I want to join the uh, customer uh, uh, experience improvement program? The default is yes. I'm just going to leave it there. I'll say sure thing. Why not? And then that's uh, totally up to you, by the way. And then at that point over here, it gives me a summary. And it tells you, you know, I have backed up my source vCenter server, which you should have done before doing all this stuff. And I'm going to click on finish. I'm going to say, are you sure? Uh, it says the source VM, Sorry, the source vCenter will be shut down once network configuration uh, is activated on the destination. Obviously, this way you don't have a conflict, right? So it's copying everything over to this new one. It's going to bring over the, the network information. And before it starts it up, it's going to shut down the old, start up the new, and away we go. So I'll say, sure thing, go for it. And at that point, it's doing its thing. And we got to wait. It said there roughly about 35 minutes. Um, and here we go. So it's copying everything across. So... Uh, guess what? I'm going to speed this up. So uh, let me just, uh, here we go. So.
so uh, we are done. That took approximately, you know, 35, 40 minutes or so, right? Uh, and I can click on this link to get started. Let's uh, let's do it. So here we go. Uh, so it's bringing me over to, to the, excuse me, the page over here. I'm going to launch the client. Now, before I do that, you'll actually notice again, VMware by Broadcom. They, so the, some of the stuff has changed. And uh, let's just go full screen here. And we got a different look and feel now over here. You see VMware by Broadcom on the branding. So I'll type in the username. And my password. And give it a few seconds. I'm not going to bother saving that now. And away we go here. Now, uh, a couple of things here. We noticed we got a little red mark on my cluster right now. If I click on that, if I click on summary, it says vSAN hardware compatibility issues. Okay, um, remember, I'm in a nested environment, so I I'm going to ignore that, right? Uh, some cluster alarm over here. If I actually look at monitor, um, I should come up. Let's go into uh, Skyline Health over here. Uh, it says the SCSI controllers. So it knows that my SCSI controller is, is not certified, right? And cluster compliance validates the storage configuration. So again, it, again, it knows uh, that I don't have valid uh, software here, <laughs> okay? So, uh, sorry, hardware, right? Because I'm in a nested environment. So I'm just gonna silence these alarm. I wouldn't do this in production. I'm just gonna silence it for mine because I'm in a nested environment. And away I go. Now, it mentioned something about licensing, right? Uh, let me, uh, okay, I'm just going to reset this back to green and reset this. If this was production, I'd be, I'd be concerned. I'd want to investigate this. All right. Now, uh, you'll see over here, if I click on my vCenter server, I'm at version 9, so everything went good. So that wasn't actually too bad. I want to show you something over here. Let's go back into here. Let's go into administration, and uh, let's look at my uh where are you now um plugins uh pre version 9 licenses version 9 licenses so you'll see right now there's my vcenter server and i'm in evaluation mode interesting so i got basically 90 days so right now i need to set up licensing on this and licensing is uh is a little different they're actually moved away from key-based licensing right uh more to file-based licensing using the uh, vcf operations I'm still waiting for my licenses, to be honest with you. So this is one thing. Before you do this, like you get 90 days to get things sorted out. Before you do this, you want to make sure you got all your licenses, all that st stuff is ready to go. Uh, apart from that, uh, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, my next thing I need to do is update my ESXi hosts, and that will be in the next video. Okay? So uh, thanks for watching. Leave comments and questions down below and watch the next video, which will be doing my ESXi hosts. See you in a bit. Bye for now.